Hello and welcome. In this video I want to explain why we need to be careful when evaluating areas underneath curves uh, when the curve crosses the x-axis. Let's say that I have the function sine of x and it should look something like this if I can draw it neatly. So sine of x crosses the x-axis at x is equal to pi and x is equal to 2 pi. So we have one full cycle of the function and I want to find the area underneath the curve for the full cycle. And you'll note that mathematically we're going to have one area that is a positive area and one area that's a negative area and otherwise these areas should be identical in size. So let's go ahead and work out what uh, the area is going to equal. So my area equals according to the fundamental theorem of calculus and um, my bounds is from 0, so 0 to 2 pi, so I want to integrate from 0 to 2 pi of the function sine x with respect to x. Actually I should note that here, so that f of x is equal to sine sine of x and um, the first of all the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine of x and this is bounded by 2 pi at the upper limit and 0 at the lower limit and if I was to substitute in the values I would get um, negative cos 2 pi minus cos of 0. So cos of 2 pi is equal to 1. So negative remains and this goes to 1. Minus negative, uh, I'll make that a plus, and cos of 0 is 1. So negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, so this is very peculiar. We end up with an uh, area of 0. Well, it makes sense and is not mathematically incorrect because, as I said, um, at the beginning we have a positive area for this part of the curve. And we have a negative area for this part of the function. And both of them are equal in magnitude, so they're going to cancel each other out once we um, carry out this operation. And this is why we need to be careful, because um, the result that we're getting is not going to be the total area, but rather it's going to be the net area uh, generated by this function. So and what I mean by that is let's say that we have and I'll draw it on this side of the graph we have one um, we have a function that does something like this and we want to find the say the uh, area under the curve between this these two this interval um, and we have one bigger area here and one smaller area here well the net area is simply going to be equal to the larger area minus the smaller area and it's not going to be equal to the total area so if we wanted to find the total area we're going to have to integrate between we're going to have to change our intervals of integration and flip this negative into a positive. So we're going to have to integrate from 0 to pi first and then from pi to 2 pi and reverse the negative so that we um, get this uh, total area here. So let me do that. The total area is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of sine x with respect to x minus 
minus because we already have a negative area here so we need to minus it we need to negate it to make it into a positive area uh, and we want to integrate from pi to 2 pi of sine x dx and that's going to give us negative cos x bounded by pi and 0 minus negative cos bounded by 2 pi and pi and substituting in my values I shall get minus cos of pi minus negative cos of 0 minus minus cos of 2 pi minus negative cos of pi and this works out to be um, cos of pi is equal to negative 1 and then so negative times negative 1 is going to give me positive 1 and cos of 0 is equal to 1 and the double negative gives me a positive so the first part is 1 plus 1 minus um, cos of 2 pi is equal to 1 so this negative will turn it into a negative 1 and we have a double negative here so that's um, actually I'll leave that as it is uh, but uh, cos of pi is negative 1 and so negating that gives me 1 so we have 2 minus negative 2 so that's going to actually give me a area total area of 4 Okay, so the combined area is 4 units squared. Okay, if you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give me a like and I'll see you on the next video. If you are currently studying math, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments. And as always, please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.